Hey, what's up everybody? It is your man Robot back for another video. And in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to level up fast-ish, but more so smart in Project Slayers. Now to do that, what I'm going to be doing is giving you some tips and tricks that I use when I play this game or that I wish I followed when I first started playing this game. So just keep that in mind. There is no set guide like go to this quest and go to this quest and go to this quest that I'm doing in this video. It's more so me telling you, hey, in my opinion, you should probably do this or you should probably think about doing this but let's continue with the video now in my opinion there isn't necessarily a way to level up like super fast in this game i think the game does have a grind element to it so just keep that in mind while you're watching this video but when it comes to the game itself i think there's a lot of things that at least me as a person while playing the game testing the game i overlooked and some other testers overlooked as well but people began to understand what's going on as they played it and if you've played games like this you pretty much know most of what i'm about to say but i'm gonna get on with the video and teach you exactly what i'm trying to show you within the video now the first thing is this is the starter town right this is i don't even remember the name of the village i'm not gonna lie this is this one i think it's that one um now when it comes to this town you start here there's quests to do i think you talk to her you do her missions and i think on her third mission you fight this mini boss or little boss guy right here now the first point of this video is this person this boss the reason why I say you should pay attention to this boss, Bandit Zoku, is because Bandit Zoku actually has a drop item. This is one of the first drop items in the game that you can actually get, and it's actually pretty common. A 20% chance is not bad at all. However, when it comes to this boss, you're most likely not going to get his drop on the first, you know, go. You're not going to be able to defeat him and get the drop almost on the first go on almost any time. But... Let me go ahead and show you what the drop item is. It is this little inventory usage thing tool right here, the necklace, that's what it was, the medallion, the amulet. Now this right here gives you 20 extra HP. Now 20 extra HP might not sound like much to you, but when you're a beginner and you're level like three, level four, and you have maybe 50 to 60 HP max, that extra 20 is gonna make a huge difference because in the beginning of the game, you're not really, able to just get hit by mobs like this and take the hits and be able to bounce back and fight back you're going to get gripped at least once or twice if you aren't careful with blocking like holding f of course perfect blocking like holding f right before they hit and holding f long enough and then hitting him with the slashes or punches now you're most likely going to be hitting the boss with the punches when you start off the game but that's okay level up your punch mastery that's another point i didn't really write down on my note app to my left on my monitor but if you want to level up your punches, I believe they actually just added this NPC. Stefan tells you, hey, punch the logs to level up your fist mastery. However, this was always a thing for at least a long time, as far as I'm concerned. So just keep that in mind. If you want to get stronger damage, I think on your fist, I think that's how it works. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section. But if you want to get stronger punches, all you got to do is level up your fist mastery and stuff like that. Pay attention to that. And I believe the fist mastery, if you have certain things, you'll be able to get skills and stuff like that. Like for my clan skill, I have the indomitable will. Another thing, if you get a clan in the game and it has a skill of some sort, that's a pretty useful clan in my opinion. In your opinion, you might say it differently, but in my opinion, it's pretty freaking useful. Now, the second point of this video, we can actually do it on this mob, is holding spacebar while you're M1ing. Now, if you see, when I M1 the mob right here, or this boss right here, I do a pretty decent amount of damage, excuse me. Pretty decent amount of damage right there. I do, you know, a good amount. But when he respawns, you'll see exactly what I mean. Now the boss respawned and I'm going to hold spacebar as I slash at the boss. Let's go ahead and do this. Oh, I meant to hold spacebar. I held F. Let me redo that. If you go ahead and slash and you hold spacebar, you do considerably more damage. I believe the spacebar adds at least one more hit, maybe two to the combo string. At least when I started counting, it's what it's been like. I could just be stupid and be wrong. But to me, it feels like when you hold spacebar, you do more damage. Now, also, I'm recording this video at 4.40 in the morning because I'm going to be getting on a flight soon. So that's why I sound kind of dumb in the video. So if I'm saying stuff and I say, I don't know, it's because I can't really cross check it at the moment. I'm not, I cannot be asked to cross check some of the stuff I'm saying. This is just my experience and some of the experiences from other players that I've gathered while asking them about their experience on the game. Now, there's two more points I wrote down, and I might have more points in the video, but this has to do with the starter town as well. There's a reason why I actually made the video start off in this area for you all. Now, the reason why I started off in this area is because most of the stuff I said applies to both people that want to become a slayer and people that want to become a demon, or people that just don't want to be either. But that's kind of weird if you don't want to do either. But anyways, let's go ahead and say that you wanted to become a demon. From what I've heard and what I've seen personally, Muzan spawns close to the starter town, which is exactly where I was over there that I showed you. Now the starter town, 
is actually a pretty important place because of that, in my opinion. That's one of the most important factors about the starter town. And when it comes to Muzan, he only spawns, as far as I know, during the nighttime. Now, where can he spawn? As I said, somewhere around the starter town. I've personally seen him spawn somewhere around this area that I'm walking around. He could spawn in any of a set amount of spawns. I'm actually not too sure where he is exactly, but just know that it is a chance to spawn, I believe, in a certain amount of set spawns. It feels randomized, but as far as I'm concerned as a developer, I'm feeling, or I'm pretty sure, I, I'm, I'm guessing actually that they set a few spawns and the players, if they really felt like it, they could make a map or mini map and they could determine exactly where it was on spawns based on those like areas. But in my opinion, I think you should definitely check out this area that I climbed up right next to the Zenitsu boss. He spawned there for me and that's how I became a demon on one of my save accounts. Now next is a, actually a pretty important point. I need to go back to the start of time because it's the closest place for me to show you. When it comes to the traveling of this map, it's a little bit difficult to traverse, I'm not gonna lie. It can be pretty confusing to walk around the map, even for me, someone who's played the game for months and actually took a break from the game so I don't remember exactly where everything is in the map. I'm still piecing things together again. I find that the map tool right here is pretty useful for a certain reason. Now you could purchase the map tool or you could open the map tool and purchase waypoints, but that doesn't get you anything. What it does is it gives you the ability to unlock these on the right where my mouse is, like this blinking village thing right here. You can unlock all these. And notice how certain ones have equip and certain ones have unlocked. The butterfly mansion I have unlocked already. And this leads me to the butterfly mansion. If I just go this way and climb up that wall or go around, it takes me to the butterfly mansion but I don't have the Zapiwada Mountain unlocked. However, let's say you unlock the Butterfly Mansion. You've paid the 1200 in-game cash, which actually isn't too difficult to farm for once you get to a little bit of a higher level. I'm only level 47, and honestly, I've seen higher levels. I've heard of higher level people, so level 47 isn't too much. I barely played the game and I got to this level, but it just took a long time in terms compared to everyone else that played the game. However, let's say you wanted to go to Butterfly Mansion, but you cannot be asked to walk around. Talk to anybody named Horse Guy, and you can select any map waypoint you've already unlocked. And I personally only use in-game money. I don't use the Robux. And I want to go to the Butterfly Mansion. Just click right there. As far as I know, it doesn't cost you in-game money. It might. I cannot be asked to look at the bottom left and read the numbers. But yeah, I got to the Butterfly Mansion. And this is actually exactly where you go as a Slayer to train and stuff like that. All these gourds. And in my opinion, this is just a side note. It has not really much to do with this video topic, but maybe another video topic in the future. The game pass to view stuff, in my opinion, when you're a slayer, you don't really need to purchase this game pass. When you're demon, you might have to purchase this game pass. I'm a demon and I still don't know if I've leveled up my demon to the point where it's like ranked up and stuff like that. The game gave me no notification. But when it comes to the slayer, you already know if you have because actually this does have something to do with the video. When it comes to the slayer, let's say I spam my abilities right here. I've wasted my breathing. My breathing is going up over time because I've unlocked total concentration breathing. If you don't have it, if you haven't finished the final gourd, it means you don't go up over time naturally like I am. So my character naturally breathes in for his breathing style, whatever it's called. I don't even, I can't, my lungs, there. But yeah, that's actually most of the points I have for the video. If I have one more, I'll fit it into the video. All right, I have one last final thing, and this one's just a personal opinion. You can disagree with me if you want to. But in my opinion, if you're gonna become a demon in this game, and I've made a demon account in this game, if you're going to become a demon, I recommend waiting a little bit. I know some of you may want to become a demon as soon as possible, which is totally fine. You can do that. But right now it's nighttime. This is the perfect hour for demons to run around. But when it's daytime as a demon, you have to hide under the shadows or try to fight under shadows against bosses and stuff like that. And it's kind of tough. Although you can level up a little bit easier as a demon because you get quests from Muzan, I personally feel like you should try to play the game with friends if you have any friends to play with in this game. You should try to play with them and fight the bosses in the game because your friends can help you at least have an easier time at getting boss drops because it becomes increasingly more difficult to just solo the boss because it just takes too long alone. And you wanna to try to get this straw hat right here. This used to be an umbrella hat in the game, but now it's a straw hat. And this one protects you as a demon during the daytime. So you can run around during the daytime while you're wearing this. And if you want to, you can go to your inventory, you can click on vanity and it becomes an item that does not go over your head. It's just a vanity item, which means it still does its usage but you just can't see it, which is an amazing thing, honestly. I love that the game has it. 
Now, that's actually the last thing I can think of for this video. If you have any comments that you want to leave, go ahead and comment them down below for any tips for other people in this game. I know there's a lot of things I could have missed, and I'm sorry that if I missed them, I didn't really necessarily just want to make a how to level up fast guide because I understood that this game is essentially just a grind game. In my opinion, a uh, how to level up fast video is a little bit difficult to do with this type of game. And I might title the video something along those lines, but I think I'll probably title it how to level up fast and smart, or I'll title it tips and tricks for this game or a beginner's guide video. So let me know what you guys think of the video by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. Comment down below any other tips and tricks you have for other players coming into the game. But till then, it's Binny Man Robot. I'm signing out now. I'll see you all in the next video. Take care, everybody. He's a coward.